This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters first. This video is sponsored by Adjuster Pro. Use code Adjuster TV at checkout. Get licensed right now at adjustertv.com slash licensing. Speaking of licenses, if you could only get six licenses to start, uh, what would they be, right? So I get this question a lot. Um, licensing can get expensive when you start getting up into, if, when you, if you've tried to buy all of them, it's almost $2,000 in one, one pop, which you may wanna to try to do, but then you have to maintain those and it can, be, it can be expensive, right? So if you were to focus your efforts, if you're like, all right, it's the middle of the summer and uh, storm season is really heating up and it's the Gulf and the, the North Atlantic are starting to, to kind of get active and things are starting to happen, which licenses should I get right now? Which, which first six licenses should I get? The first one you have to get is your home state license if you live in a state that has adjuster licensing requirement. Right. So in other words, if you live in Texas, you have to get a Texas adjuster license. If you live in, if you live in uh, California, you have to get California adjuster license. Okay. Th we'll talk about reciprocity and your designated home state license here in a second. But the, the bottom line with this is, is that if you live in a state that, that licenses adjusters, you must get that license because that's, that's your residence, right? So there's, you can't say, well, the California one seems like a pain in the butt to get, so I'm gonna get Texas as my home state and, and designate that. As, you can't do that. It's, you can try, um, but it'd probably be a fail, especially if somebody at te in Texas or California notices that you're trying to do that, then you're gonna get, they'll just probably just say, no, you can't do that. Um, so, but what if you live in a state that doesn't have licenses, right? What if you live in Colorado or if you live in, Wisconsin or Kansas, right? Or let's see, where else is there? Uh, a bunch of states, there's there's 34 states that license adjusters, right? So that leaves 16 or so, right, that don't have a licensing requirement. So you live in one of those states, what do you do then? Well, you have to designate any, and you can designate any home state you want to that has a license, you designate that as your home state license, right? So you could, designate California or New Mexico or Alaska or something like that. If you live in Colorado, which does not have an adjuster license, you could say, well, I want the New Mexico license. It's my designated home state license. The problem with that is, is that um, you want to, do you want to pick the, the, the home designated home state that has the most reciprocity with other states? And what is reciprocity? Reciprocity says that if you, this is how it works. Right, just keep it super simple because people get confused by this. If you have a Texas license, it's you, it's, you either live in Texas and that's your home state license or you live in Colorado and you've gotten the Texas license as your DHS, your designated home state license, but that's your home state license whichever way, right? Then states that recognize Texas's adjuster license will let you bypass their um, licensing requirements because you f they say they're saying, okay, well, we recognize Texas's licensing requirements, so that fulfills those requirements for us. So to get your Florida license, all you have to do is um, apply, right, and pay the fee. If you want your Oklahoma license, if you want your Minnesota license, if you want your this, that, whatever license, right? Any, anybody that recognizes Texas's license, it, it allows you to bypass the pre-licensing exam, the fingerprinting, the doing all the things, right? And then just give 35 bucks or $125 or whatever it is to Oklahoma, and then they'll just give you a license, right? It does not mean if you have a Texas license that you can just go work in Oklahoma who, who has a license if you don't have an Oklahoma license, okay? It's not how reciprocity works. It's not like your driver's license where I got it in Montana, I can drive all over, to loop through every single state in the lower 48 and go to Canada and go to Alaska and put my car on a boat and go take it to Hawaii and then come back and nobody's gonna say boo about it. I get pulled over and get a ticket, I hand my Montana license if I'm in wherever, right, Florida, um, and then I get a ticket. I'm not gonna get in trouble for have, not having a Florida license. 
it's different for adjust your licenses, right? If I'm working in Florida and I don't have a Florida license or I'm under some sort of an emergency blanket license or, an, or uh, like a, something that the governor did where they put in a temporary emergency license like they do sometimes, if you don't have any of those and you're working there illegally, right? And you can get in trouble for that. So you, you have to have that license to work there, okay? So that's reciprocity and your designated home state license, your home state license. Um, the first licenses that I would get, uh, if you live in Texas, obviously you're getting Texas, right? That's your home state. I'm also going to pick up um, Florida for sure. And I'm going to pick up New York. And I'm going to pick up Min uh, Minnesota. And I'm going to pick up Oklahoma. And then probably pick one. If you, this is your first six, right? Um, any of the Gulf, the Gulf states, right? Or even California. Um, if you got a little bit of a, if, if you if if you are live in Colorado or you live in Kansas or you live in North Dakota, which don't have licenses, I think this and this changes. So if this is different when you're watching this video, it goes back and forth between Texas or Florida being the best for to, to get as your DHS. And it's a number of factors. It's like how fast the turnaround is, how overwhelmed they are. Um, things they may change the law in those states where they say, all right, well, you don't need fingerprints anymore, or you do need fingerprints, or you have to, you know, submit your eyelashes, or you know, whatever. Right? It goes back and forth. So I think at the moment it's Florida, right? If you live in Colorado and you want to get your designated home state license, Florida is the one to get. I think it's got the fastest turnaround at the moment. But again, changes. But Florida and Texas are kind of the two heavy hitter licenses. If you get your Florida, then the next one I'm getting is I'm gonna get my Texas license, right? And I'm gonna get my Oklahoma license, and I'm gonna get my Minnesota license, and I'm gonna get my uh, New York license, and a California license, right, probably. Um, if I have a little bit bigger of a checkbook, I think the best strategy, especially this time of year, midsummer, um, is I'm gonna get everything from Texas to North Carolina. Right, so that the whole southeastern part of the country, um, Georgia, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Carolinas, um, Florida, right, Arkansas, um, Tennessee. I don't know. I can't remember if Tennessee has a license or not. Kentucky, um, and then Indiana has a license, right? So I'm gonna probably try to get like most things, uh, most things, pretty much east of the Rockies. I think that's that's a pretty good play, right? Important note, right? So are you like, all right, well, you know, I live in Colorado and I only want to do remote work. I'm really going to strive and try to make that happen where I can get some remote work, become a remote desk adjuster or whatever, right? Which you can try to do. It's going to be more challenging, I think, but there are absolutely opportunities out there. You still have to get as many licenses as possible, right? I say this all the time, licenses are, are keys to opportunity, right? So every time you get a license, it's a key that unlocks a state. Right, so you, you get the key and you unlock Georgia. Well, you, you, you're unlocking Atlanta, right, and, and all the big cities and you know the major metros and Savannah and everything else that are in Georgia, right? It's a it's a pretty pretty populous state. It's a lot of claims. There's a lot of policies there, right, which could conceivably be a lot of claims. Um, but if you live in Colorado, or even if you live in Texas, and you're like, I don't, I, I only want to stay at home, so I don't need to get anybody else's licenses. Or I don't need to get a license at all. Um, you're not going to have very many opportunities because, as a remote adjuster, you can't handle a claim in New Hampshire without having a New Hampshire license, right? So if if, if you're doing photo and scope, if you're doing the writing side of a photo and scope situation, which there's a lot of opportunities out there for this, and they say, well, you know, you live in um, Kansas, you live in Kansas City, and uh, you have all you have is a Texas license. You know, we we have opportunities. Um, for photo and we just sent a, a, a bunch of photo and scope adjusters to Seattle, to Washington, right? If you don't have a Washington license, you can't do the writing side of that, right? So you just can't do it. Um, so you got to get licenses. The ideal state to answer this inevitable question, get them all, right? It's expensive. You're not going to work in something. You're going to find it that, like, I never worked in New Mexico. I had a New Mexico license for like 13 years, never worked there, right? You're going to find you have licenses that you just don't use. It doesn't matter. Every one of those is an opportunity. And I would say that even working one storm in one place in one year out of five makes that makes getting paying the little fee for that license and maintaining it worth it. Um, final piece, 
CE? Do you need to, like, if, so you have 19 licenses, do you need to get take CE classes for every single state? The answer is no, you only need to take, like if you have your Texas license and then you have, so you have, we'll say you have 20 licenses and 15 of those are included, they're including Texas or reciprocal with Texas, including Texas. And then you have five that are kind of standalone, which is not totally accurate because I don't know how many, New York is a standalone state where it's not reciprocal with anybody, right? Um, you only need to get CE for Texas to cover those other 14 states that are reciprocal with Texas. And any standalone state, you got to do CE for them individually, right? So, do you, so your CE for your Texas license, um, if it's not accredited to New York, it's not going to, it won't count towards your New York license. You'll have to go and find a provider that's got New York CE, which adjusterpro.com has CE for everybody, right? California, same deal. California is not reciprocal with anybody. Um, I think this, and again, these change, but I think Alaska and Hawaii aren't reciprocal, or maybe they're reciprocal with a small number of states. Um, so that's one of the benefits of the reciprocity thing is that you, the requirements to maintain your license are also recognized by states that are reciprocal, right? So now that said, you could take um, some CE classes uh, that are accredited to Florida, for example, right? Um, but you live in Minnesota and you have a Minnesota license. Um, and yeah, I get this question. Well, can I apply those to my Minnesota license, right? I don't have a Florida license, so I'm, it's not gonna apply to them. Um, and my answer to that is, if, you, if there's a training course out there, like Xactimate Level 1 and 2 that we, like we train, um, offers 15 credits of Texas CE, uh, but you don't have a Texas license, you've got your Minnesota license, um, the best thing I tell you to do is to call the Minnesota Department of Insurance and say, hey, I'm taking this training. Um, it looks like it's only accredited to Texas. Will you guys count it? Will you, will you, can I apply this to my license if you guys review the whatever? And they might say yes, right? So it's worth, it's worth a phone call um, to, to ask that kind of a thing. So <clears throat> to recap this whole thing, um, you need to have a license, whether it's your home state, if you live in a, a state that licenses adjusters, or your designated home state license, which if you live in a state that doesn't have any adjuster licensing, and you wanna probably try to grab either Texas or Florida, don't know which one, these, these days it's Florida, um, I would reach out to adjusterpro.com, let them know that we sent you, and say, which one should I get as my DHS? And then I would pick up, um, if you have a limited uh, ability to, to spend money on this at the moment, which is okay, right? Because you can still pick those up as you go. Um, I'm gonna pick up Texas, Florida, Minnesota, Oklahoma, uh, New York, and probably California to start, right? And then I'll try to fill in the rest of the Gulf, the Gulf and Atlantic states, and then the rest of the Midwest as I go. And by the way, you go to Adjust Your Pro to get your first license and your CE, but you're gonna go to another website called NIPR, Dot com or surcon.com to get the to apply for the rest of those licenses and I think they the, each one of those websites you may have to go to both of them to, to fully do this um, but those are the, the the places that you pick up the reciprocal licenses right if you're like well I want to get my DHS in Florida and I also want to get my California and my New York because and those aren't reciprocal then I'm you're going to go to adjust your pro for those all three of those, right? If, you, if you're like, well, now I just need my Texas and my Oklahoma and my Minnesota, then you go to NIPR or CIRCON for those. Make sense? Cool. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.